Well, it was gonna happen eventually. I've been having some good luck with recent movie releases. With every Movie Monday I've been making, covering Toy Story 4, Spider-Man Far From Home, Stranger Things, and the new Lion King remake, but we're in a brief little movie pause now. I'm looking forward to the Dora the Explorer movie and Fast and Furious next month, but a movie that went a little under the radar and was made a little before my time making Movie Mondays that I kinda wanna talk about now is Yesterday. You probably heard of this film as the one that wasn't quite a simple musical nostalgia trip like Bohemian and Rocketman were, but instead was one that introduced a very interesting new concept that could go in a lot of directions, if handled appropriately. The premise of Yesterday takes place in modern day, but is all about the Beatles. And the way that works is by having the entire world, that's very much the same as our own one right now, experience a full-on global scale blackout. And though it only lasts 12 seconds, it's enough for everyone in the world to forget the Beatles, one of the most iconic bands of all time. And beyond memory, all references to them also disappears with the exception of one man, our protagonist Jack. He and he alone seemingly is the only man across the entire globe who remembers the Beatles, and as an aspiring musician himself, takes it upon himself to retell the Beatles songs and stories to the modern world. After all, a world without the Beatles isn't a worthwhile world. And that premise alone just sounds outstanding, especially considering we're surrounded by a culture of nostalgia and the idea of leaping onto iconic musicians from decades ago. So the fact that this new format to the formula is already such an outcast that could be warped onto any famous artist of the late 20th century means it has so much mileage to run with, hitting on all sorts of genuinely intriguing points. Like, how would the Beatles work in the modern world? Were they successful because of their looks, or is their song quality enough to hit the number one again? And how would the world be changed if the Beatles never existed? And unfortunately, Yesterday isn't one of those movies, despite the fact that it so clearly seems to be exactly that kind of movie. But the reality is, Yesterday is a rom-com all about a man who remembers the Beatles, a potentially really interesting protagonist, and a woman who simply doesn't remember the Beatles, like 99% of the rest of the population. Now, yeah, sure, she's kind of like his childhood friend, you know, she liked him before he became a musical god and all that. But at the end of the day, the romantic plot is the most uninteresting part of the entire premise. And for this film, it is the number one priority. It's written by the guy who made Love Actually, so, you know. And don't get me wrong, it is a nice story, but it's a tired, generic one standing on top of a fantastic foundation. I enjoyed the movie, but it wasn't the movie I wanted. Not to mention, the longer you watch the movie, the more questions begin to brew that you demand get fleshed out to some capacity. For example, the blackout itself. The fact that we don't get a formal explanation for it is kind of cool, I'll admit. I like that. Groundhog Day is a far superior film without the knowledge of why time repeats itself again and again until the protagonist improves himself as a person. Magic kind of makes it cooler. The fact that this blackout takes over the entire globe is also pretty interesting, and the point that it only lasts 12 seconds is a weirdly specific detail. But on top of that, the movie kind of takes the unexplained bit to an extreme. Like, while the Beatles being forgotten is the forefront of the movie, that was not all that was lost for some reason. Scattered throughout the movie are other random elements that the entire population and Google has forgotten, like Coca-Cola or cigarettes. And while I guess it's cool that there's more mystery added, these revelations are just played off for one-off jokes of, what is that? Oh, not again. <laughs> and something about all that just irks me the wrong way. On the one hand, I can understand the sanctity of the mystery and the fact that it's never explained by the end of the movie, but ham-fisting random extra elements for the sake of a throwaway joke just seems like an immature way of handling the premises material. Even if it was something as simple as all the forgotten elements have some hidden connection that links them and gives an inkling of what specifically chooses them to be forgotten gives at least a little more satisfaction to the concept, even if it doesn't explain the main question of why it happened. Imagine if the movie had tackled its concept in a much more dynamic and genuinely interesting way. Like, let's start at the very core. The Beatles have been completely eradicated. All influence and reference to them have vanished from existence. What impact is that going to have onto the present day? If this band was not the number one all-time best band ever, then who dominated the music industry back in the 1960s? 
The Beach Boys, The Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin? Who would have replaced their top spot in the charts? Or what if the protagonist's realization continued further when he discovers that the name of one of his friends, who perhaps was directly inspired by the name of one of the Beatles, suddenly had their name completely changed after the blackout because their parents were no longer influenced by the popularity of the Beatles? Or forget all the minor changes of the Beatles being gone, if Jack does take on the modern music industry, just being able to see how the music industry has changed and would react to the Beatles material is incredibly interesting enough. And the film kinda hit those points, with Jack initially thinking that his lack of attention even with the Beatles songs comes from his lack of appearance and it actually being a visual thing and he would never be a real musician. And that whole question is a real valid point, bringing up questions of quality music or marketable faces. We also see connections to real modern day stars like Ed Sheeran and we briefly see modern weird edits like the Hey Dude joke, but you'd imagine a lot more to become prevalent, or for any of these songs to entirely just be hashed out. It would be interesting to see what doesn't fly these days. And what if we see a more direct progression through the industry, seeing how each level of success plays out? Something that could almost be an edutainment area of the movie to a certain degree. Or how's about the simple element of human error? If Jack is the sole person to remember the Beatles, does he truly have the knowledge to remember every single lyric? Elements of the film do touch on him desperately trying to remember details, but I feel it could have been explored a little bit more. Like, as Jack is an aspiring music writer, what if he genuinely could not remember the correct line and so goes with his gut on what it could be, or even tries to add his own original flair onto it? And if he does, how well does that bode for him? Considering his godlike success, would the people lap it up anyway? Would it occur to him that the Beatles bits are the only worthy bits of the song and he can't add his original thing without ruining the whole song entirely? Does he discover his own skills in being able to translate these songs into more modern formats? Or does this disparage from reality hit the audience, maybe telling them subconsciously that it isn't quite right, almost hinting that their memory could come back, or that they just don't feel that the song is correct? I've got a giant spider on my office door, so I'm gonna go get my fly swatter. And actually, one of the ways the movie tackles this idea is by introducing two other characters who do have genuine memory of the Beatles before the blackout. Which, while cool in its own way, only opens up for more questions and potential avenues to explore. For example, why across 7 billion people do three people remember the Beatles? Did they have a similar blackout event like Jack being unconscious during a moment of it, or did they just survive it anyway? Do they remember the other items as well, like Coca-Cola and Harry Potter? If not, are there other scattered humans with memories of some of the other elements, but not the Beatles? And speaking of these two characters, while it was nice that they were simply friendly, wholesome characters, imagine if their plotlines went into different directions. When they first appear, it's a mystery as to how they'll react to Jack and grows some genuine tension as to how they're going to approach the situation. And Jack himself full on panics about being called out for his work. And though it turns out that they want to support him, give him more lyrics and spread the songs of the Beatles once more, it could have been so much cooler if there was more to them than that. Like what if one or both of them genuinely thought of Jack as a hack stealing from the work of icons? Or what if they supported Jack but disagreed on what direction he should go next? Maybe one doesn't let him stop until he's finished absolutely every song. Or another demands for changes to be made to make the songs even better. What if they became overwhelming to Jack and added an extra challenge for him to overcome disagreeing with other die-hard Beatles fans? And speaking of being called out for his work, that interview scene with James Corden was just one of the biggest middle fingers to anyone who watched the trailer. Literally ending it off with the idea that Jack's gonna be approached by the two living Beatle members. And you know what happens? Absolutely sod all. It was literally all an anxious little dream. Like, screw you. This is probably the most investing part of the entire premise. If someone else is claiming to write the works of the Beatles, where are the actual Beatles during the course of these events? What are Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr actually doing? We never find out. And while I think it is an actual sin to not involve an appearance from every Beatles member, it does at least hit one really good point in a genuinely investing scene, and that is when Jack meets one of the Beatles. It's the only one he sees, but it is none other than John Lennon himself, now having lived a long and prosperous life. 
Since the Beatles never existed and had a giant rise in popularity, John Lennon was never assassinated and lived to see another day. That whole concept is just outstanding. I still can't entirely get over it. And he too has no recollection of the Beatles, being just a simple hippie-ish old man. It seems he has also been feeding loss because I think his wife was killed instead, but the scene is all about Lennon reassuring Jack and supporting him on whatever he's trying to do, despite not fully understanding him. It's a really moving scene in concept, but my god do I want more. Like, why isn't Lennon a musician? Did he never choose that life? Or did he never meet the other members this time around? Did the other three exist at all, like a complete role reversal? Are Ringo and Paul the dead ones this time around? And where the bloody hell are they still? This movie just skimmed the surface of what could have been a really interesting plot point to go forth on, and the fact that it missed the mark is eternally frustrating. But I think if Universal really wanted to run with it, this premise could go further, further than just one movie. I mean, I imagine we're in for even more nostalgia trips of the older generations of music looking at the success of Bohemian and Rocket Man, and Universal alone already has the best concept under its belt that can continue further if it wanted to. Like, imagine next time around an entirely new event is placed onto, say, Metallica, Elvis, or Prince. Maybe there's another blackout years down the line and someone else has a new realization. They hunt down a similar story from the last blackout and discover that Jack has experienced the same thing. Or it could could even have Jack taking it all on again, perhaps even realising another icon is missing and again going through that second blackout. This time, while also going through the musical motions of the industry, maybe making more of a point about a new genre and how it's been changed since the icon's origins or something like that could be approached. This time, maybe the protagonist takes more of a detective approach and tries to work out more of the core of the problem, simultaneously spreading the love of the world's beloved music whilst getting to the bottom of all of this amnesia. If it's someone new, maybe it could be a woman singing a man's song or something different to the formula, and maybe in their investigation they actually hunt down Jack and try to team up with him for this concept. Or even without answering the biggest question, this could just be a reoccurring event of the world forgetting musical legends and having them be rebirthed to the big screen in some new and fantastical way. And it's a series that could potentially never end for Universal, and continues to retell just why we love the greatest music tracks of the past. And maybe after a long run of re-experiencing every decade, the final answer can finally be told about all of these phenomena as being because this entire world is one big computer simulation. I mean, that's my current theory. The closest thing we get for an explanation for the blackout is that it's something related to the Y2K bug that was said to wipe out all technology at the turn of the millennia but it arrived late in this scenario. So if this blackout is simply every technology abruptly stopping and restarting again, potentially with a handful of glitches and corrupt files, then the fact that this has happened to actual human memories can only really be explained through the idea that their memories are also files to be restarted and potentially corrupted, and can only be avoided if manually shut off for a brief moment during the mass restart. The entire world is simply a simulation of a being of higher power asking the question of, how the world would cope in a time without the Beatles, cigarettes, Coca-Cola and Harry Potter. But that's just my theory of what's actually going on. Will this concept ever get a sequel or a series? I don't know. On the one hand, it's always been a romance. That is the entirety of the plot. And though it's nice, it's not what we all probably want. On the other hand, this movie made a hundred million dollars at the box office, so the demand and revenue potential is there. And with us being so grounded in this nostalgia culture, I guess we'll just have to see where Universal decides to move next. I would love another Yesterday, but I really, really hope it hits the correct marks this time. Because if it does, it won't just be a good film with a cool concept, it will be just as iconic and intriguing as the source material they're inspired by. Truly a gem for the ages. Be sure to check out the new Instagram page and the new links in the description only to see The Biscuit Barrel, the comedy sketch group I'm part of performing at the Edinburgh Fringe this year. Digital sketches available to watch down below.